Now, speaking of the Mediterranean, researchers are returning from recent studies at sea reporting, quote, ghost forests where once luscious and vibrant coral reefs once stood. And in some cases, the bleaching and the widespread death of biodiversity is occurring over just a couple of months under the intense summer heat. With more is head of the Department of Environmental Studies at Tel Aviv University, Professor Colin Price. Professor, thank you very much for joining us. So is the heat alone the cause? What's going on? was one of the main causes. Um, like people suffer from heat waves on the land, we're also finding out now that you can have heat waves in the oceans. When the temperatures rise above a certain level, uh, fish, corals, the biodiversity in the oceans is impacted by increases in temperature, just like we are on the land when we have a heat wave. And one of the obvious things that we see when the waters get warmer than normal and much warmer and last for weeks or months is that the, the pigments of the coral reefs start to die and they become white, what we call coral bleaching, that all the corals lose their color and they basically are dying because of the increase in the water temperature. There are other problems also with pollution in the ocean, also what we call ocean acidification because the carbon dioxide is increasing in concentration in the ocean, so the actual pH is going down, they're becoming more acidic, the water, all of these are having impacts on, on uh, marine ecosystems, but particularly it's obvious with the corals which we're seeing in the Mediterranean, also in the region of France, which have this massive bleaching this, this summer. So, so I was going to say, off the coast of France, uh, in the survey specifically that we're alluding to, the surveys are showing between 70 and 90 percent death rate in the reefs. How does this ripple out to the rest of the ecosystem? It definitely has impact on all, the whole ecosystem, and it's not just in the Mediterranean, the Great Barrier Reef off the, the coast of Australia. In the last few years, we've see, seen massive die-off of the coral reefs because of also heat waves in the ocean occurring over there. Some of the corals can recover, and may, they may come back and they may re revive um, next year when we see them return back to life. But again, the same as the heat wave on the land, when it gets past a certain threshold, people cannot deal with it. We see people dying. The same with the corals. Some of these corals are not going to uh, recover. And with the corals, all the life forms which live around them, the fish and the algae and all the other plant life in the oceans. I know, I, I know that in Israel, among other places, scientists are working on breeding healthier and stronger and more resilient coral. Can this address the issue? At, to what degree? If, if so, you know, and, and what are some of these solutions? Is it too late? Yeah, so it's, uh, I'm not sure, it's not the field of my research, but definitely that people are trying to develop more uh, sturdy, more, more stronger uh, corals and plants. We do it the same with agriculture. Some of the, the agricultural crops that we're trying to develop now, which will be able to withstand droughts in the future, can grow with less water. So the same with the corals. We, there's research done with corals who are trying to make them more uh, um, resilient to these heat waves we're having in the oceans. Whether we'll succeed is difficult to know. Uh, maybe we can move some of the corals and put them in places where the waters are still cooler, maybe slightly deeper, but maybe, maybe just a drop in the bucket. Wow. Can we do something? Well, right. we need more time to talk about that, but definitely I think we, it's still not too late. In a few weeks, we're going to be having the, the next UN conference in Sharm el Sheikh, the United Nations Conference on Climate Change, where people will be talking about all these issues. Definitely things we can do, but we're running out of time. All right, Professor Colin Price, thank you so, so much for joining us. You're welcome. Hi, everyone. It's Emmanuel Kadosh. I wanted to invite you all to subscribe to ILTV Plus, where you can find our daily news and updates about Israel. And not only that, but live feeds, entertainment, our kosher food show, and so much more. Needless to say, your subscription to ILTV Plus helps us grow and create more content while also supporting the state of Israel. Our app is available on all platforms and devices, so I'll see you guys there.